Hi everybody, welcome to video number seven, uh, looking at the Diamond uh, DA40, the uh, next generation version, which has got the uh, Garmin G1000. Um, so I've programmed up everything I can on the X-Touch Mini and the Stream Deck. So this is a test flight to check that all the functions are working and uh, I'm uh, familiar with how it all works. Uh, so this is the plan, flight plan that we've got today. It's one we've used before. In fact, we used it for the um, the TDI version of the DA40, and we found that there were some problems. If you've seen that video, with uh, a procedure landing at Biggin Hill. Uh, so what we're doing today is we're going to replicate that flight. So just to orient you, this is the south coast of England, and that's London, and we're going to fly just short of uh, the London space. Um, we're going to fly from Shoreham to the VOR at Seaford and then we will take that on, on up towards Biggin Hill and somewhere on around here we we'll, should be given the procedure that we're going to use for landing. Uh, it gets busy around here um, from experience doing this flight that you're just about reaching your target altitude and making the turn and being given your directions for the procedure so yeah it's um interesting times around here so that's what we're going to do we will fly uh let's take off from here and when we get uh, the instructions we will turn and pick up the radio nav the vor uh into here and then once we get to here we'll uh, swap to gps follow the gps in and pick up the procedure follow that in and we'll make a hopefully make an ILS landing from this direction here into Biggin Hill and that's what we're hoping is going to happen today uh, and I have got a nav log up so I can see the frequencies and the directions and everything here and I'm going to put that onto my second monitor because you don't need to have that cluttering up uh, uh, the screen for yourselves okay so let's get things sorted first let's get into our cockpit and we can get things started I will put up here my actual um, X-Touch Mini that I'm using so you can see what I turn here and what I have to do with that and I should also put on here if I can find it there we go that's the layout of the one so I've got my, my uh, extra screen and I have a software version over here about there of um, here that's the, you look at the software for my stream deck so you can see what I'm seeing on the stream deck you won't be able to see my finger because it's not, it's not a webcam um, but I'll try and tell you which button I'm pressing anyway so let's go and get started uh, so we need to get the uh, engine started over here so firstly we'll turn on the position lights and get the engine armed up and we're just going to check that we have throttle control yes we've got throttle control that's fine then okay so let's uh, get engine started so we're going to turn the key one key to get the, the electric circuits working press the start button and we get rid of the alerts we haven't got low voltage anymore and we've got throttle control and let's go into the MFD press button 12 to get the Garmin started okay right and avionics on so we need to program it in our flight plan into the MFD. So I'm using a head tracker at the moment. So I'm going to, I've got that paused so that we can have a close up look at the MFD without uh, the head tracker wandering around. Uh, so we're going to go into a flight plan. So we need to change here to layer B and we press the flight plan. And we want a cursor. So we press this button here makes our cursor active and we need to put in our uh, departure airport which is uh, Shoreham on Echo Golf Kilo Alpha so we turn the app inner knob and pick up Echo <coughs> 
turn the outer knob to move along golf Kilo Alpha and there's Shoreham so we can press enter for that and we put our destination in I, it doesn't matter what order you put it in particularly uh, but if I put the destination in because we're going to Biggin Hill which is Echo Golf Kilo Bravo so it saves me a lot of fiddling if I turn this once you see it's already Echo Golf Kilo so it just needs to go and change the Alpha to a Bravo and um, it takes a little while for some reason for this to pick it up off the database sometimes about 10 seconds which is very weird because it's, it's very close to where we are now anyway let's enter that and that's in so if I press if you use the outer knob and go back up here I'm going to insert Seaford VOR in here And I can press enter on that and it says for duplicates uh, we want the one in England so that's EG and that's into the flight plan so that's the current flight plan what I want to do now is to program in the uh, frequency for nav1 for the for Seaford I've got it on my uh, flight nav log but I can also pick it up by going to the nearest so just pressing the outer here and it says we're in nearest but it's nearest airport if I use the inner knob we will step across and look at the nearest VOR and it's Seaford that I'm after and Seaford is 117.00 so we can uh, put that in here now so I need to go back to layer A so I can use the nav buttons here 117.00 and make that active what I would also like to put into the nav is the uh, ILS frequency for Biggin Hill for what I think is the suitable runway so let's uh, get out of that so if I turn the cursor off nope that's not going to work okay so if we Oh, sorry back to layer B that's why back to layer B and hold down the clear button we're back out and now I want to go and look at the uh, actual facility Echo Golf Kilo Bravo so I need a cursor for that so we're on yeah Echo Golf Kilo, Bravo, Biggin Hill. And we've got an ILS runway uh, 21 on 109.35. So I can put that in as a standby frequency. So back to layer A to put that in. 109.35. So that's standby ready for when we get there. We can pick that up and use that. Okay, so what we need to do now is to uh, put in from my uh, nav log, I need the, to put in for the uh, radio that we need to pick up for the VOR, which is according to this, uh, 102, 102 is my magnetic heading. So let me just go and look over at my primary flight display. And there's my VOR. And so on the course, I'm going to 
put that around to 102. And if we look up here, you can see that it's already picked up the, in uh, the frequency and it's identified it as CIFR, so we know that's correct. Okay, so uh, next thing is to get my ATIS sorted out because uh, I need to know uh, the current uh, pressure, air pressure. So I need to tune to 130.9. Eight zero, so it's uh, the comms that we're using. We're on layer A. One three zero point nine eight make that active. Okay, so we've got uh, the barometer. So if I go to layer B here, I've got two barometers. This first one is the one for the uh, Garmin, and that was 3008. And I need to put that into uh, here as well into my uh, standby barometer so that's barometer 2 3008 it's about there okay so we're now programmed up with that next thing to do is we've been told which heading we want to uh, fly which runway we're using and uh, let's get that I'm going to put this onto my second monitor. <clears throat> so, back onto layer A, and we're going to change the. Oh, sorry, back onto layer A, yes. And we'll put the heading bug onto runway 20 so that we know uh, we're turning onto the correct runway. Right, so the next thing to do will be tuning to shore and ground. And we're going to uh, request IFR clearance for an instrument flight plan. So I haven't programmed this in on the world map. I've just literally programmed it into here, and it's going to read this, read it from there, and give me a clearance. Um, so two pieces of information it's going to give me. First, it's going to give me uh, the should be given the departure frequency, but it's also going to give me a code for my transponder. So I'm going to prepare that on my stream deck. 
so I get into my primary flight display and I'm going to get in my, into my transponder and into code so I'm ready to put the code in and you should see the code appear here as I type it in so uh, let's go for number eight. Tower Diamond Golf Bravo Mike 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 IFR to big and ready to copy Diamond Golf Bravo Mike 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 is cleared to big and airport is filed take off runway 20 climb and maintain 11,000 feet departure frequency is 118 decimal 475 squawk 1635 to my squawk codes in and we'll just read that back to them Diamond Golf Bravo Mike 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 cleared to Biggin Airport as filed take off runway 20 climb and maintain 11,000 feet departure on 118 decimal 475 squawk 1635 Diamond Mike 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 read back correct contact ground on 123 decimal 155 good day so if I go back here, what I'd be able to do now is to uh, I'm going to switch it to the alt the altitude mode. So that's now switched on, and they should better see me. Um, I've been given 11,000 feet as my uh, standby frequent as my uh, initial altitude. So I'll put that in. So that's ready to go. And I can put my frequency in, my standby frequency for my comms as Okay, so what I need to do now is uh, get back into my cockpit view and I'm going to re enable. Well, let's get back to my switch view on my uh, stream deck and I will be uh, requesting the taxi and uh, I'll pause the recording so you don't have to watch me taxi. It's quite a long taxi here. And I will come in again uh, when we're at the threshold of the runway, ready to go. Uh, so I'm going to re-enable my head tracker. And reset that. There we go. Shoreham Ground, Diamond Golf, Bravo, Mike, 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 with Sierra ready to taxi IFR. Diamond Golf Bravo Mike 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 Taxi 2 and hold short of runway 20 using Taxiway Alpha Mike Cross Runway 06 Foxtrot Cross Runway Tree 1 Lima Kilo. Contact Tower on 123 Decimal 155 when ready. Taxi 2 and hold short runway 20 using Taxiway Alpha Mike Cross Runway 06 Foxtrot Cross Runway Tree 1 Lima Kilo Diamond Mike Mike Mike. Okay, so you're rejoining us uh, at the edge of runway uh, 20, just about to ask for clearance. Um, just a last check of everything, we've got our uh, altitude programmed in, we know where we're going to the VOR, the VOR is set there for CDI. I'm not going to turn the autopilot on obviously, but I will put heading hold because we've got the heading bug in the right direction. So as soon as we need that, we can use that. So the heading hold is uh, armed, ready to go. Uh, frequencies are set, and I really want to get out of this mode here. So let's uh, do a long hold on the clear. So we're just back to the map. In fact, while I'm here, I could change the range. So we can see where we're about to head. Oh, okay. So let's get clearance and let's get going. Shoreham Tower Diamond Golf Bravo. Mike, 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 ready for IFR departure runway 20. Diamond Golf Bravo. Mike, 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 altimeter 30 decimal 08 wind. Takeoff runway 20. Cleared for takeoff runway 20. Diamond Golf Bravo. Mike, Mike, Mike. 
So parking brake off, taxi light off, landing light and strobe on as we're about to enter the runway. So we've got full visibility of us there. Um, flaps for takeoff. Center Diamond Golf Bravo Mike 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 is passing 1,000 feet climbing 11,000 feet. Diamond Golf Bravo Mike 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 London Center Altimeter 30.08 continue to see your approach to a Delta as planned. Okay, so we can bring in the autopilot now. So the first thing is we'll go autopilot into nav mode. So that should tur start the turn for us and we can put flight level change and put in 70 knots as our rate of climb. So you can see here it is flight level change, 70 knots, and the VOR is set for the autopilot. So we should be able to fly hands off now for a while. So it's going to turn and pick up that VOR radial we plugged in here, which will be similar to the uh, GPS magenta line. So we need to look at the load now. Uh, we're in climb which I can see we're climbing here because it's flashing. Uh, so that's about 90% of uh, load for the engine is the uh, recommended power setting. <coughs> and there's the coast. So that's the uh, airfield we've just come from, Shoreham. And we're gonna fly along the south coast towards Brighton and on to Seaford. Uh, keep an eye on the load, still 90. And we're, yeah, about 70 knots, and we're getting 800 feet per minute of climb, which is pretty good. So we've got 15 miles to go now to the VOR, 15.1, 15 miles and ground speed 77 knots and that's about 11 minutes to get there. So while we're here, we can have a quick look at uh, some of the functions on the PFD. So let's get into the primary flight display here. And look at the PFD button. Uh, I can uh, bring up bearing one, which is tuned to the VOR. So that gives me a radio uh, if view of uh, how far we are from Seaford. So we've got uh, and that just about agrees with the GPS as well. So that's okay. Uh, I don't really need to change anything else. I've got my wind indicator over here here but I could put that up onto here as well so let's uh, have a look at the wind options 
option one has got the two uh, s2 vectors option two and option three and I quite like option two I think yeah we'll go with that so let's come back out of here and back out of here right so my uh, load has gone up to 91 so I need to back off from the throttle a little bit to 90 89 90 that should be about right so here we are flying along the south coast there's Brighton and that's Brighton Pier sticking out into the sea and beyond that Brighton Marina and then uh, the ge geology changes around Brighton we start to see some of the white cliffs famous on the south coast of England <coughs> and we've picked up the uh, radio for the VOR okay so off we go still got a healthy climb 750 feet per minute uh, the load is just below 90 so that's okay and we might just make uh, our target altitude of 11,000 feet around the time we get to the VOR but of course that's the time when things get busy we've got a turn to make we need to change it to GPS mode and we'll probably be given our procedure as well for uh, approach to Biggin Hill around the same time. So a lot going on in a few minutes time. So sit back and enjoy the ride while we can. Okay, so we're still maintaining the 70 knots quite happily. The load's up to 90 and uh, still making around 800 feet per minute climb. I think we might need to look at putting the uh, pitot heat on its uh, 9 degrees and as we go higher that's going to get worse, it's going to get lower so let's give it a little bit of heat on them. There we go. And fuel, um, the bottom marker here is our main tank and the top one is our reserve tank. So we'll just test out the fuel transfer as well. So I'll turn that on and we should see this rise and that fall it takes a while we get an advisory here saying that uh, we've got the pump auxiliary pump on and we'll come back and look at that in a couple of minutes and see if that's um, trans how much fuel is transferred so uh, what happens here is uh, the GPS uh, ha preempts the turn before uh, the actual VOR um, so if we were flying GPS it would turn and make a smoother turn but I'm actually going to fly it uh, pretty much on to as if we we're doing radio navigation all the way I'll fly it pretty much on to the VOR so we have still got what 6.1 uh, miles to go and ground speed is what fairly healthy 82 knots so we're, we're making progress uh, about four minutes to go to get us there but in that four minutes, yeah, we expect a, an altitude change, we expect uh, a procedure and the turn all of around at the same time. I could probably uh, put the flaps in, I forgot to uh, put the flaps down. There we go, let's put the flaps in and we should get a little bit more uh, ground speed out of it now. Rate of climb has gone up a bit because uh, we've got less drag going on, so we're at uh, 750 uh, feet per minute. Yep, uh, we're doing ground speed, still 82 knots, that's okay. Oh, there we are, a little creep up now, 83, yep, so we're making progress. And our fuel transfer, yes, so our uh, left tank is now higher than the right tank, so we have transferred fuel across, so we can turn the fuel transfer off. And that advisory should go away.
3,300 feet. Keep speed not above 180 knots. Expect ILS runway 21 approach via D060H transition. Clear to D060H diamond mic mic mic. Okay, let's uh, get the altitude sorted now. For that's better for safety. So I'll program that in, and I'm going to go down on my vertical speed rather than um, a flight level change. So vertical speed at about a thousand feet per minute let's get down there and I need to throttle that well back now as we're going to wear over speed I will now start initiate the turn on the GPS so that we are going towards Echo Golf Ch uh, Kilo Bravo so I'm going to put that into GPS mode so let's go back to uh, my primary flight display CDI and I want that into GPS mode and back turn the nav back on that should initiate the turn onto the GPS keep an eye on my speed so we'll come back a little bit more on the power and now I'm going to program in that approach so layer B a procedure I'm going to select that approach and it was ILS runway 21 that's what we want so we'll enter that and that's the transition point so that's okay so what we need to do now is to come down here and load that in And that's picked up that we're cleared to the uh, waypoint. And we'll just see what it does. So it seems to take me back to the user waypoint. And now initiating the turn and picking up the uh, vector for the waypoint that we've been given. So slightly odd behaviour from the GPS there, but it seems to be sorting itself out. And let's have a look at the range while we're here. Vertical speed uh, still okay, airspeed still okay. So let's have a look at the range. And it seems to have the procedure correctly marked. and we're 31 nautical miles away which is going to take another 14 minutes so I'll probably edit some of this out for you you don't need to see all this descent and I'll bring it back in if something interesting happens but anyway I like to do my uh, a sense on uh, the flight level uh, control the flight level change so that will hold my uh, airspeed for me and sort uh, find the best uh, rate of climb that it can with the power that I've set and I like to do my descents uh, having control of the vertical speed so that is the bit that the trim is working on trying to keep that constant and I control the airspeed 
myself with uh, the power setting so make sure that we're not over speeding and under speeding um, seems to make most sense to me that way because then we, we can make sure that we are descending as, as quickly as possible or safely as possible and uh, we just take control of it, make sure we don't over speed Okay, so we're moving away from the coast and moving off towards Biggin Hill. So I th think everything is sorted out now on the GPS, and it's in GPS mode. Um, I can probably uh, stop using the nav now for Seaford, but I'll keep it in the standby in case we have some kind of weird failure and we need to go back onto that VOR. So I'm going to swap the nav over and make uh, the ILS at Biggin Hill my active which it won't pick up just yet but we were told that it was runway 210 so I will change the heading bug so that we know that we're pointing that at the runway heading as well okay so it's now just picked up the uh, radio frequency for the ILS at Biggin Hill, so uh, we know that it's tuned the radio in correctly. Uh, we've still got 23 uh, mile, nautical miles to go to our first waypoint, but we are approaching it at uh, nearly 130 knots ground speed because we've got a tailwind behind us. So making good progress along here. And beginning to approach our target altitude we've got a, a thousand feet to go so I have to get ready on the power because as it levels out we're going to start to do some airspeed and uh, the cruise setting recommended is about 70% on the load So we've got that at 70, we're at 2,300 feet and we're cruising, well the, uh, the airspeed is increasing slightly, let's see how that works. Yeah that's a fairly healthy 118, 119 knots, uh, ground speed 131 knots so we're going to make some good progress now going to one two nine or decimal four zero five diamond mike 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 breed has been creeping up so I've coming back onto the load and I'm going to make it about 60 so we can bring the airspeed down but also we're going to start maneuvering fairly soon so it's uh, worth bringing the speed down as we start to maneuver about 2.7 miles to go to the waypoint you can see the GPS has actually got an arc built into it uh, so it should follow that arc around and that's there is the first waypoint that we've been given so that's uh, waypoint one on our route in and we can see that in our flight plan let's bring the flight plan up d060 hotel that's uh, where we're going to then alkin 
and so we're into the approach now so we can turn that off and you can see we're beginning the slight turn on the arc now and it's worth keeping your eye on the uh, GPS arrow here and you can see from here my nav 1 it's telling us we're what 13.6 miles away from the uh, actual uh, runway so we're uh, basically flying a bit of an arc to come in so the GPS arrow is kicked around to the left that's gone uh, what, uh, 20 degrees or so and we'll line up with that and there it goes around, it's kicked around another 20-30 degrees and we'll pick that up so it, it's working okay, it's finding its way around and look ahead we should see the River Thames there it is, there's the River Thames working its way out towards the estuary at the south end <clears throat> and so we should turn within that uh, space so that looks okay point seven miles away from our uh, first waypoint and it should work its way through those waypoints quite quickly so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bleed off some speed maintaining the altitude Okay, so he's now pushed us on to the uh, next waypoint, and let's get the altitude sorted out. And again, we'll do that as vertical speed. <coughs> Again, we're going to uh, be manoeuvring quite tightly soon, and we need to get our speed down so we can get the approach sorted. Diamond Golf Bravo, Mike, 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 seven miles northeast inbound ILS runway two one approach. Diamond Golf Bravo, Mike, 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 Big and Tower. Altimeter three zero decimal zero eight wind two zero six at one zero. Cleared ILS runway two one approach. Cleared ILS runway two one approach. Diamond Mike, Mike, Mike. Okay, you can see it, it's automatically switched us over to uh, the locator 1, uh, so it's picked up the uh, frequency there. I didn't make any change to that at all, that GPS has done that automatically. Um, there's the glide slope indicator, 
and that's showing us uh, that we need to go slightly to the left to maintain uh, the center line of the ILS but that's okay and I can actually put it into approach mode So this should, in theory, pick up the glide slope automatically. I'm going to put the first notch of flaps in, flaps in now because we're beginning to lose some speed. And we're about four miles out, and I can see the runway ahead. And we are beginning to pick up the glide slope. Just check my flaps indicator. Yep, we've got the first layer of flaps in now. And there's the glide slope that's been captured. You can see here it's gone green, run the glide slope. So I need to come way back on the throttle because we're going to make that descent. Going to full flaps now. <coughs> it's a very slippery, slippery aircraft. Uh, drag coefficient is quite low, so losing speed is a bit more difficult. Speed management here. And I think I'll take it manually from here. So I'm going to kick out the autopilot. Hi everybody and this is really a uh, continuation of the same video uh, it's exactly the same flight plan that's been plugged in uh, programmed in it's um, from Shoreham to Seaford and then Seaford up to Biggin Hill uh, but this time we've uh, I've reversed the wind so it's coming from the opposite direction which means we'll have a different runway to take off from and a different runway to land on and uh, this one does not have an ILS approach uh, so I'll show you uh, a way of dealing with that in instrument terms. Um, I won't bother uh, showing you how to put everything in on the flight plan again, we'll I'll edit that out and I'll bring you in as soon as we get uh, notification of the procedure that we're being offered and that'll be roughly as we reach the Seaford um, VOR. <coughs> so same flight plan, different wind direction. London Center Diamond Golf Bravo Mike 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 is passing 900 feet, climbing 13,000 feet. Diamond Golf Bravo Mike 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 London Center Altimeter 30.08, continue to Sierra Foxtrot Delta as planned. Diamond Mike Mike Mike, your tree one mile southwest. Maintain present heading and altitude. Expect vectors. Visual runway zero tree approach. Maintain present heading and altitude. Expect vectors. Visual runway zero tree approach. Diamond. Mike. 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 Okay, so yeah. it's very early that we've got our uh, approach. I'm going to take it out to Seaford. Um, so I'll edit a little bit out and uh, bring you back in when I make my turn towards Biggin. Descend and maintain 2,500 feet diamond, Mike, Mike, Mike.
<clears throat> okay, so they've already reduced my altitude and I'm going down on the vertical speed. Uh, topping at 900 feet per minute now. Uh, powered well back to make sure that we don't overspeed. And we are about 3.3 miles from the VOR, which is when I was going to make my turn off towards uh, Biggin. Um, Never sure about the ATC on this program. He said maintain your current heading and altitude and expect vectors. But my uh, heading at, the, at that time wasn't um, heading towards anywhere particular. I was still on the um, e heading from the runway. So I assume it meant maintain your planned heading rather than your current heading. So that's what I've done and I'm soon going to make this turn and I'm going to turn by uh, using the GPS so I'll wait for the GPS to tell us that we're moving and then we'll uh, use the CDI here to change it to GPS so I'm going into my primary flight display ready to press the CDI button to change that to uh, GPS And we are 1.3 miles from the point. So I'm going to change it to, to GPS now. So pressing CDI and we're in GPS mode and put it back onto nav. And there's the turn. So you can see that will take us on to Biggin Hill, but it won't be uh, lined up with the runway. Uh, there is no ILS, we haven't put in an ILS frequency. Diamond Golf Bravo, Mike, 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 2,500 feet. Diamond Golf Bravo, Mike, 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 begin approach altimeter 30.08, continue as planned. Okay, so we are now coming to Biggin Hill, and we've uh, been told we're going to have an approach for uh, runway 03, uh, but there is no ILS for it, but I want to come in so I'm lined up with the runway if possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch now to OBS mode. What OBS mode will do is it will uh, suspend my flight plan and use the next waypoint as if it was a virtual VOR. So if I press the OBS, I'm now in OBS mode and you can see that uh, over here, a big and hill has now become a, a 
the VOR that's sending out a radial in both directions. And using my course 1, I can turn that to be the course that I want to land on. So I want to come in on 30 degrees. So over here it's now uh, sending out a radial, a virtual radio, radial, uh, which my GPS is creating uh, for uh, 30 degrees. So it'll uh, fly me over to that, line me up on that radial and fly me in on the 30 degrees uh, which should be lined up with the runway or fairly well lined up with a runway. Uh, so if you are given a waypoint that's not in your uh, flight plan you want to do that you can always do uh, create a direct to to that uh, waypoint and then uh, use OBS and uh, the course button to create a course for it um, it's also useful if you ever get given a hold you want to hold at a waypoint uh, so you can look at the uh, on the charts it will tell you the direction of the hold and you can plug that in as a radial let's just change the range on this now <clears throat> so uh, that's what OBS does it, it's uh, a quite useful little cheat to uh, get you to uh, get you to an airport uh, lined up with runway heading if there's no ILS uh, see so it'll act like an ILS coming into it but you won't have it's not a precision approach uh, so you do have to fly it manually in at the end and uh, it won't pick up a glide slope or anything for you so you, again you need to judge that but uh, at least it will help you when you are looking out of the window and trying to find uh, the airport and also to find, uh, make sure you're uh, coming in on the runway you expect to be coming in on. But you can still see that it's saying Seaford and Echo Golf Kilo Bravo, so it's still Biggin Hill that we're coming in on. But we're just uh, making sure we're coming in on the right direction. And hopefully that uh, GPS uh, track will start to close now as we get closer and closer to our desired uh, heading. And we've got uh, 12 miles to go now get into Biggin Hill so Biggin Hill is somewhere over there 12 miles in that murky stuff looks like there's a lot of rain coming out of that cloud ahead of us So we're 10 miles out so we should be getting to the point where we can see the runway now but we've got some murk in between and a rainbow how about that <coughs> Seven miles out, and I'm going to report the wrong way in sight. Diamond Mike 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 has the runway in sight. Diamond Mike Mike Mike, you are seven miles southwest of Biggin. Maintain present heading and altitude. Contact Biggin Tower on one tree for decimal eight zero five. Maintain present heading 
and altitude. Tower on one tree for decimal 805 diamond. Mike, Mike, Mike. Tower Diamond Golf Bravo Mike 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 six miles southwest inbound visual runway zero tree approach. Diamond Golf Bravo Mike 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 Biggin Tower. Altimeter tree zero decimal zero eight wing zero tree six at one two. Cleared visual runway zero tree approach. Diamond Mike 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 one zero tree six at one two. Cleared to land runway zero tree. Cleared to land runway zero tree diamond. Okay, so obviously you need to lose a bit of height here, so let's uh, drop it to a thousand feet. And I can, can see the wrong way ahead. And let's put one uh, degree of flaps in, one uh, notch of flaps. <coughs> still flying on the autopilot, still flying on that radio on the zero three zero. Watching my speed. I said I've got no glide slope, so I'm just have to do this visually now. And I think I'll take the autopilot off and manually land it from here. to full flaps and they're fully down
Well, a little bit bumpier landing than I was hoping for, but <coughs> I had a coughing fit halfway down. Okay, I'm not going to uh, bother showing you uh, taxiing and parking, you know how to do that. But anyway, I hope that you uh, saw what the OBS <coughs> function gives us. It's quite a nice um, little uh, function. Diamond Mike, 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 did you hear my last transmission? So. Taxiing to general aviation parking using taxiway Delta, <coughs> Delta Hotel Diamond, Mike, Mike, Mike. Okay, so that really concludes the work for the DA. Uh, 40 done both versions of that so i'll choose another aircraft and uh start to decode that for you so i'm not sure what i'm going to do next um i suggest you subscribe if you haven't already and see what comes up uh notifications are always useful so that uh, you get told when i put something up it probably takes me about a week to uh get to grits with an aircraft decode how it works and i'll do all that first and then i'll do the videos to show you uh, what I found out about it. I'm going to stick to some of the single engine uh, aircraft for a moment, try to get all those ticked off. <clears throat> Most of the work that we've done can be recycled by the look at it, but, uh, so it shouldn't take us too long to move stuff across and programming it up and uh, then it could do uh, one a week or something like that. Okay, see you in the next video then. <coughs>